Hello YouTube and welcome to the next Roots Learning video. On today's video we're going to be revisiting Germany once again and I'm going to be driving a scenario which I found on Steam Workshop which is Munich's Regio Roster 1 and we will be driving on the Munich to Augsburg route between Augsburg and Munich which is a distance of around 61 and a half kilometers which is around 37 to 38 miles Along the way, we will be calling at Augsburg Haunstetterstrasse, Augsburg Hochzoll, Kissing, Mering Sankt Afra, Mering, Pacing, and finally Munich. Our attraction for the journey today is a BR Class 426 electric multiple unit. In fact, our train is formed of two Class 426s joined together. From what I understand, the Class 426 is almost identical to the 425, with the exception that the 425 is four coaches long and the 426 is two coaches long. The Class 426 was built by Bombardier and Siemens, which was a consortium, and built between 1999 and 2008. A total of 43 Class 426 electric multiple units were produced. The maximum speed of these units is 140 km per hour with a power output of 1,576 horsepower, making them high-powered and lightweight, so these trains were designed for start-to-stop services. Although on this particular service, uh, we're actually not going to have too many stops, and we're going to be travelling um, non-stop between Mering and Pacing, which is a distance of nearly 25 miles. Once in the cab of the Class 426, the first thing that I'm going to do is turn on the CIFA and signalling systems. So, first thing I'm going to do is press Control and Enter, and that's just turned on the signalling system. And indeed, you can see that the 85 lamp on the dashboard has illuminated. And now I'm going to press Shift and Numpad Enter to turn on the CIFA system. And you probably noticed that a white light just went out on the dashboard there. I'm not going to go into detail in the signaling into the signalling systems on this particular video. Indeed, if you'd like to know more detail about the signalling and safety systems which are in use on German railways, then please see my German signalling tutorial for more information. And I'm going to post the link to that in the description of this video. So the next thing I'm going to do is put the train into forward. As you probably noticed that the headlights are already on. And just to quickly show you the cab, so down here we have the combined traction and brake controller. Simply you move it towards you for extra braking and away from you for extra power. Up here we have the uh, traction gauge which shows you really whether you're applying power or brakes. If the needle is pointing to the right you're applying power and if it's pointing to the left you're applying the braking. In the middle we have the distance measurement equipment which is used on the LZB signalling system which we will encounter later on in this journey. Just to the right of that is the speedometer measured in kilometres per hour. And then finally to the right of that we have the brake gauge. And you can see the red needle there. The lower that's pointing, the harder the brakes are applied. Normally, I will try not to go below four when applying the brakes. Certainly with this train, you can brake quite hard and indeed the brakes are very, very effective. Now that we've gone through that, just to demonstrate the horn. And so now we've had a look at the cab, we're pretty much ready to start. Departing Augsburg Hauptbahnhof, the starting speed limit is 80 km per hour and we've got around 1.6 km which is one mile to go to the next stop which is Augsburg Haunstetterstrasse. You may have noticed that we went into a monitored state as we departed from Augsburg there which is where the 85 and 70 lamp illuminated alternately so I pressed the end key on the keyboard to take us out of monitored mode Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to go above 45 kilometers per hour without the emergency brakes being applied. So now we're reaching 80 kilometers per hour. I've just cut the power back to ensure that we don't break the speed limit. In a short moment, the speed limit will be increasing to 120 kilometers per hour. Though we're not going to accelerate at that point as we are getting close to our next stop already. In fact, I'm now going to pull the power back to idle and you can see the platform coming up just ahead. You can see a sort of post in the middle of the screen, that's at the end of the platform. 
So I'm now applying the brakes as we get closer to the station just to try and ensure that we don't enter the platform too quickly. At Augsburg Hounstetterstrasse we do need to stop at this end of the platform as the entrance to the platform is just to our left there, you probably just saw these steps coming in. And so I now have to try and estimate where the right stopping point will be. I've actually braked slightly too early there. I'm going to aim to stop just around here, just a couple of posts before that shelter that you can see just ahead. Departing Augsburg Hounstetterstrasse, the starting speed limit is 120 km per hour and we've got around 3.3 km which is just over 2 miles to go to the next stop which is Augsburg Hochsel. As you can see this train really does pull away very quickly indeed. And so I don't go straight into full power as we pull away, but step up gradually. But certainly once we're in full power, you can see the train's just really flying away with us. And we're already at around 70 miles per hour now, 112 kilometers per hour. And we're coming quickly up towards 120. So I now need to cut the power back to ensure that we don't break the speed limit. In a short distance, the speed limit will in fact be dropping down to 100 kilometers per hour. So I do need to look out for the braking points for that. Indeed, what I'm looking out for is a light right-hand curve coming up in the distance. And once we reach this light right-hand curve, just as we're about to enter it, that's where I'm going to put on the brakes to slow down to 100 km per hour. So just to point out that we will be travelling under the PZB signalling system for most of the journey until we're between Mering and Pacing and about halfway between the two we will then enter a faster section under the LZB system. So we just entered the right hand curve here, I've just applied the brakes slightly harder than perhaps I originally intended and we're now down to 100 kilometers per hour in time. Augsburg Hochzoll station is coming up now. It is a long platform and we do need to stop right at the other end. So we can enter the platform fairly quickly. I normally break while we're on this girder bridge just around here. And so we should now be slowing down about right for the stop. We need to stop at the H sign, which is, as I mentioned, right at the end of the platform. Departing from Augsburg Hochzoll, the starting speed limit is 100 km per hour and we've got around 6.2 km to go to the next stop, which is Kissing. As we get close to 100 km per hour, I'm going to bring the power back just to ensure that we don't break the speed limit. Shortly after this quite sharp right hand curve that we're currently on, the speed limit will then be going up to 140 km per hour, which is the maximum speed of this train. And indeed this train will not exceed that. Um, if I go into full power and just continue in the 140 km per hour section without touching the power handle, the train speed will stabilize at around 134 km per hour and won't increase beyond the beyond 134 up towards 140. As you probably just noticed, we just passed the 140 km per hour speed board, so I've now gone into full power to accelerate towards that. And in the moment, you'll see what I mean about the train actually being unable to attain 140 km per hour.
So we're now doing 130 kilometers per hour and as you can see the needle is slowly climbing just above that and then it will stabilize at around 133 to 134 kilometers per hour which is around 82 to 83 miles per hour I believe. just see a post on the right there that we've just passed followed by an electric pylon holding the electric cables in this area at that point we've got 2.8 kilometers to go to kissing What I'm looking out for just ahead is a sort of S-bend where our track turns very lightly to the right and then left. There is a signal on that S-bend which is around 1.15 kilometers from Kissing Station. And so I'm going to apply the brakes for our stop at this signal. So I believe it will now be the next signal which we encounter. You can just see the right hand curve coming up now of the S-bend. And so now we're entering that. I'm just going to cut the power in a moment and start applying the brakes. At this point, we've got just over a kilometer to go. At Kissing, we do need to stop towards this end of the platform. So we do need to enter the platform slower than maybe we would at some other stations. And so I'm aiming to enter at no faster than around 30 miles per hour. Which we're doing roughly that now and we're just coming down towards 25. I'm going to stop by the shelter just coming up with the red post that you can see on the right hand side. Departing Kissing, the starting speed limit is 140 kilometers per hour and we've got around 3.2 kilometers or two miles to go to the next stop, which is Mering Sankt Afra. In a moment we're going to enter a large sweeping left hand curve and indeed the curve will not end until after our next stop. At the first signal which we encounter on this curve we've then got around 1.7 kilometers to go to our stop. So we're just passing the signal now, we've got around 1.7 kilometers to go. What I'm looking out for is now the rear of some signals, which it looks like is just coming up now. And I'm going to apply the brakes for our stop just shortly after the rear of those signals there. And I'm braking now. Looks like I might be braking just slightly too early, so I'm just cutting back on the braking a bit. We do actually need to stop right at the other end of the platform here. As that's where the platform entrance is, you can just see the platform coming up on the left now. So I could have probably left breaking another three or four overhead gantry posts before I actually braked there. just allowing the train to coast in at around 25 miles per hour at this point. Now you can see the end of the platform coming up. I'm going to aim to stop next to the H sign, which you can see just coming up on the right hand side.
Departing from Mering Sankt Afra, the starting speed limit is 140 kilometers per hour, and we've got around 1.9 kilometers to go to our next stop, which is Mering. At the next signal we encounter, we've then got 0.8 kilometers or around half a mile to go to our stop. And so what I'm doing now is I'm just going to idle the power at this point and not allow the train to accelerate any further. And now you can see the signal is just coming up, which indicates 0.8 kilometers to go. I'm going to apply the brakes in a moment for Mering Station. So just as we approach this point on the left hand side there, I'm now applying the brakes to slow down. Coming in slightly quicker here than I anticipated, unlike the last station which was a bit slower. But we're still going to slow down in time as you can see here. I'm aiming to stop, I believe it's around halfway along the platform here at Mering. So we've got this shelter just coming up on the left hand side which actually houses the entrance to the station. And then there's a second shelter on the left hand side shortly after that. And it's at this second shelter that I plan on stopping the train. And so this is about the right stopping place. Departing from Mering, the starting speed limit is 140 km per hour, though it is soon dropping to 120 km per hour, and we've got 38.9 km to go to the next stop, which is pacing. As we get to 120 km per hour, I'm then going to cut the power back to ensure that we don't break the speed limit. So now doing 115. As you can see, the speed limit's just dropped to 120 km per hour at this point. And I've pulled the power back to try and ensure we don't break the speed limit. I'm just going to keep an eye on that needle now just to ensure that it doesn't climb or fall too much. It's actually falling a bit, so I'm just going to give us a bit of extra power. Shortly after we've left this left hand curve here, the speed limit will then be going up to 160 km per hour, though as you've already seen the maximum speed that this train will go at is 134. We're going to continue along this slower line until just after Maysac station and then we will enter the LZB signalling system and go on to the fast line until shortly before pacing when we will cross back over to the slow line once again. The speed limit is now going back up to 160 km per hour, well not actually back up because it hasn't been that yet, so it's now gone up to 160 km per hour. And there won't be any speed changes now until we enter the LZB signalling system. So along this section all that we actually really need to do is just keep an eye on the CIFA system and make sure that we keep acknowledging the CIFA alarm when it goes off. Other than that there's actually not a lot else for us to do. We're going to go through a number of stations which are going to get gradually closer together as we get towards Munich. After Mammendorf station, which is in three stations time, we will then enter, I believe, the S-Bahn area. I believe that's the furthest reach of the Munich S-Bahn. I could be wrong, but I believe that that is the case.
We're now passing Al Tegnenberg station and at this point we've got 32 and a half kilometers to go to pacing. So I'd just like to say, following the success of the recent route guide video, which has proved pretty popular, which I made on the West Somerset Railway, I am hoping to make a, a few more of them soon. Ultimately culminating in a route guide on the London to Brighton route, which I believe will be one of the most complicated videos I will have ever made. It will likely be an hour long, possibly slightly more, as I don't think I'll be able to condense it down to less than that. Um, I'm, going to need, I'm going to need to give information, a uh, general overview of the route, and also information on 26 stations, I believe it's possibly 8 tunnels as well, quite a number of junctions, uh, bridges, viaducts, and other points of interest and landmarks which I'd like to cover to give a, a really, really detailed overview of the Brighton Main Line. As part of that is part of my local line to London, it's certainly a route which I have a connection with, and it's possibly the, the route in the UK that I've travelled on the most. I'd also like to expand the route guides to cover some American and German routes. The same with the train guides, I'd also like to expand them to cover some American and German trains for more variety and to make things more interesting. We're now passing Haspelmoor station with 29.3 kilometres to go to pacing. So yes, I am hoping to make some more route and train guides soon. One of the problems with making them though is that they are extremely time consuming with all of the research, script writing, editing, planning, everything that you have to put into making a video. Even though the average route guide or train guide is considerably shorter than the average route learning video, the route learning videos are actually easier to make and quicker to make. And they also seem to be more popular at present, which is why I make more of them than any other type of video. But hopefully the route guides and train guides will catch on and pick up more, and I, I will be making certainly quite a number more in the future of them. I've been asked recently several times about the UK signalling tutorial which I promised, and when it's going to be made. Well, it's certainly going to be made. But my answer has to be, it will be ready when it's ready. Unfortunately, I can't give a time frame on it, because there's so much planning that needs to go into it. It's going to be a very comprehensive guide, including all three of the different signalling systems you would encounter in the UK, which are the normal signals, along with the TVM430 signalling system, which, while not British, is the only route on which you will find it in-game is the London to Faversham route, which is in the United Kingdom and also the radio token block system of the West Highland Line extension route is another signalling system which I'd like to include in this guide. So planning it, writing a script, getting all of the different bits of footage together and, and being able to just demonstrate it in a really interesting way is something that takes a while. If I'm honest I haven't started work on it yet but I do plan on starting work on it soon. One of the issues, it's like I've said before, is the main issue with making videos in Train Simulator, and that's simply motivation. If I'm not motivated to make a certain video, it's just not going to happen. Regardless of how much I, I might like it on the channel, I really need to be in the right frame of mind and the right mood to make that particular video before it will get done. I am hoping to cover another US route soon in a route learning video, which I'm looking at the Marias Pass. I found a scenario which covers the full length of the route on an Amtrak Empire Builder service, so I'm hoping to cover that in the not too distant future. Just to point out that we are now passing Mammendorf Station with 23 and a half kilometres to go at this point to pacing. So as I was saying, I'd like to cover the Empire Builder, Amtrak Empire Builder, between Shelby and Whitefish. It's something I will have to split into two parts, because one part would make the video over three hours long, which I feel is just too long. So it will likely be Shelby to Glacier Park in part one, and then Glacier Park to Whitefish in part two. I understand that there are some mods available for the Amtrak Empire Builder train, and I'm not sure where to get them, so if any of you are aware of these or could possibly direct me to them in the comments, I would be very, very grateful. Particularly any sound mods, which uh, I'm sure that the 
the loco there doesn't sound quite right and beyond that at any mods to the braking system because you only have to make a very light brake application and then you lose a lot more speed than you plan and when you release the brakes you often actually lose a further five to ten miles per hour before the brakes fully release which just doesn't quite seem like realistic behavior to me I do think that will be an interesting route to cover though, starting with the flatter area with around the plains towards uh, Shelby and then heading up towards the mountainous region. Doing it in a passenger train because the speed limits are higher and I generally prefer slightly faster routes. We're now passing Malking Station with 20.4 kilometers to go to pacing. So in addition to doing another US route soon, uh, I would still like to do more German videos because uh, Germany is the country that I've covered the least in any route learning videos. Uh, some of the problems uh, surrounding that are that there's not many suitable scenarios. I hate using default scenarios uh, due to the lack of AI traffic and certainly lack of variety. But I'm not confident enough to make my own German scenarios with the correct traffic uh, because knowing me I'll probably get the wrong train in the wrong place and it will look silly. So I have to rely on Steam Workshop scenarios and while there are many good scenarios out there one of the problems with that is that I still don't have quite enough variety of German trains in Train Simulator uh, to be able to play most of the workshop scenarios. We're now passing Maysac station with 17.6 kilometers to go to pacing. In a moment we will be entering the LZB signaling system and there will be a bleep in the cab. The 85 lamp will go out and the U lamp to the top right on the dashboard there which is blue will illuminate as you're going to see now and that indicates straight away that we've got 4.1 kilometers to go to the next speed change as you see the distance measurement equipment in the center there illuminated initially with a number and now we're now down below four kilometers instead it's a green bar which is showing us how far away we are from the upcoming speed limit and in the speedometer there you can see in the bottom there's a three digit readout that says 120 which indicates what the speed limit will be at that point we know when we need to slow down for the upcoming speed limit when a red G lamp illuminates on the dashboard. Once that lamp illuminates, that indicates that from that point we need to apply the brakes to slow down for the upcoming speed limit. Personally, I think it comes on slightly early, but I, I will follow it. And so as that lamp illuminates, I will then brake for the 120 km per hour speed limit, which is only in force for a short distance before the speed limit then goes up to 200 kilometers per hour which is certainly much faster than this particular train can go. We're now passing Gern Linden station with 14.3 kilometers to go to pacing. As you can see the red G lamp has now illuminated so I've now got the brakes on and I'm slowing us down for the upcoming 120 speed limit. We're now doing 120 kilometers per hour, so I'm releasing the brakes completely. I'm just going to allow the train to coast temporarily. As we lose a little more speed, I will then add just slightly more power, which we are doing now. So I'm just adding a little bit more power just to try and ensure that we don't lose too much speed. The station that we've just passed was Olking. Sorry, no, correction, Esting with 13.1 kilometers to go to pacing so i correct that yes so as i said that was esting it's actually the next station which we pass which is olking speed limit has now gone up to 200 kilometers per hour though there's actually no indication in the cab that that was the speed change it's gone up to that and as you can see 9.3 kilometers away now we've got a speed reduction down to 80 kilometers per hour so I've gone into full power and we're just going to continue to accelerate we just passed Olking station there 
and so we're going to continue to accelerate now and I'm just going to leave it in full power until the red G lamp illuminates indicating that we need to start slowing down for the 80 km per hour speed limit. So as I was saying uh, about covering German routes and the uh, lack of trains that I have and the lack of AI in default scenarios, another issue is that on some of the newer ones I get more lag than I'm really comfortable with. Although of course with the PC upgrade now coming up in just under two months time, hopefully a lot of the lag which you've seen in past videos will become a thing of the past and I will be able to cover more routes. One which I'm particularly keen on covering once I have a new PC is the Northeast Corridor, New York to New Haven, which currently is just unplayable. So that should hopefully be vastly improved with the new PC, which I've now got planned out. I know what the specs on that will be, and hopefully that will be ready towards the end of September. I'm also planning on making a couple more videos on the Weirdale network, including one from Bishop Auckland to Weirhead as we haven't actually, well, I haven't covered that route yet and I'd like to really showcase more of the beauty of that add-on uh, by showing more of the journeys which can be undertaken. So we've just passed at Grobenzell station with 8.3 kilometers to go to Pacing. So we're now approaching 4 kilometers from the 80 km per hour speed limit. You'll see now the 4000 will go out, indicating that the distance is now being measured once again by the green bar there. We're now passing Lockhausen station with 5 kilometers to go to pacing. So very shortly now we're going to get the G lamp illuminating telling us that we need to start slowing down for the upcoming 80 km per hour speed limit and also a yellow lamp on the dashboard will illuminate which it has done now indicating that we're approaching the end of LZB. So I'm now braking to bring our speed down the G lamp has just gone out so I'm now reducing the braking a bit because that indicates that we are slowing down quick enough. As we approach the next signal, apart from the speed limit going down to 80 km per hour, at that point we will then be reaching the end of the LZB section and entering PZB mode once again. Just accelerated slightly there mistakenly. It's one of the problems that I'm finding I've got with this particular train, is actually knowing what position the power handle is in with the HUD turned off. So I'm just bringing our speed back as we slow to around 73 or 74 there. The last station that we just passed through was Langvied station. In a moment we're going to cross over some points back over onto the slower lines there. And then shortly after that at the next signal we're going to get a PZB warning for an upcoming 60 km per hour speed restriction at the following signal. So as we approach the signal after we've crossed the points onto the slower line, I'm going to press the PZB acknowledge button just before we pass it to ensure that we don't miss the PZB warning and no emergency brakes are applied. 
At that point we've got around 300 meters to slow down to 60 kilometers per hour. I'm probably going to brake slightly earlier than that just to try and make sure that we've slowed down in time because the system can sometimes apply the emergency brakes when you really don't expect it to. So I've just pressed the acknowledge key. I'm now bringing our speed down to 60 kilometers per hour. We're actually going uphill so I've slowed down a little bit quicker than I planned there. And we're now doing just over 60 and we've now slowed to 60 and you can see now that we're just passing the signal here with the 60 kilometer per hour speed restriction in force. Just after this we're going to start going downhill in a moment which is why I'm allowing the train to continue to coast at this point because I do know that we're going to start gathering speed on this downhill section and in fact I may well need to use the brakes to control our speed on the descent with the gradient leveling out just before we enter the platform at pacing which you can see just ahead. I'm now going to give us just a small amount of power as the gradient has leveled out at this point. I saw no clear stopping point here at pacing so I'm going to aim to stop at the end of the roof which I am estimating is probably about the right place. Departing from pacing, the starting speed limit is 120 kilometers per hour, and we've got around 7.1 kilometers to go to the next and final stop, which is Munich Hauptbahnhof. As we get towards 120 kilometers per hour, I'm going to reduce the power once again to ensure that we don't break the speed limit. So I'm just cutting the power handle back now. We're now reaching 120 kilometers per hour at this point. It's just a case of trying to move the power handle to balance it so that we don't accelerate or lose too much speed. Coming up in a moment is an up 1 in 125 gradient which will cause us to lose a little bit of speed and then the gradient will level out for a brief moment before going down at 1 in 125. So I just added a little bit of power as we were going up there and now as we're about to go down I've cut the power back just to try and ensure that we don't end up speeding on this descent and keeping a close eye on the speedometer it doesn't look like we're gaining or losing speed here at this point and so the gradient is now leveling out in a moment we're going to get a pop-up box warning us that we're going to have a speed reduction coming up which will be slower than usual on our entry into Munich. There we are, we've got to be slow to 100 kilometers per hour as we pass Hirschgarten station. We're currently going uphill at one in 150 and then shortly afterwards we're going to be going down at one in 125. And as we start going downhill at that point, I'm then going to apply the brakes to slow down to 100 kilometers per hour so we're just starting to go down now so i'm just making a light brake application to bring our speed down in time to 100 kilometers per hour and then there's going to be a second pop-up warning us of further speed reductions for a as i said a slower than usual approach into munich So 
So the signal speed limit coming up, which would usually be 60 kilometers per hour, is now going to be dropping to 40 kilometers per hour instead. So I'm going to reset the PZB as we pass this next signal, which has a warning on it. So I'm just pressing the acknowledge key now. I'm now going to start braking for the upcoming 40 kilometer per hour speed restriction, which will come into force at the next signal. So we're down to 60 at this point and I'm just allowing the train to coast for a moment. I can see the signal coming up just ahead where the speed limit will be dropping to 40. So I'm allowing the train to coast and just slow down gradually. And then in a moment I'm going to brake further to ensure that we've slowed down to 40 kilometers per hour in time for the signal. And so now we're stuck at 40 kilometers per hour until just before the platform at Munich, where the speed limit will be dropping to 30 kilometers per hour and we have to slow down further. You can now see the platforms coming up just ahead with the main Munich station there. Munich is certainly a very, very large railway station. And it's got over 30 platforms if I remember rightly. And so I'm keeping us at just below 40 kilometers per hour for a moment. And then as I said shortly before entering the platform we will be slowing to 30. I've just idled the power now and I'm allowing the train to coast. And now I'm just going to apply some light braking and we're now down to 30 kilometers per hour. I'm now going to allow the train to continue to coast through the platform as we head towards the buffer stops at the end and I'm aiming to stop just as the buffer stops disappear below the window. Stopping slightly too early there, so I'm just giving us a tiny bit of power. Now the buffers are just disappearing just now. So here we are, arrival at Munich. Thank you very, very much for watching. I really do hope that you've enjoyed the video. Please don't forget that you can find me on Facebook for the latest updates, the link of which is in the description of this video. And if you value the work that I do and would like to sponsor me towards the cost of new equipment or DLC to enable me to produce um, a wider range of videos in a higher quality, then please visit my Patreon page for further information. Again, the link for that is in the description of this video. Once again, thank you for watching.